Yes! Oh, fucking righty. What's up, everybody? Peter fucking Joseph here for video number two on your Wednesday evening, January the, excuse me, February the 21st, 2024. Thank you for watching right here on the Peter fucking Joseph YouTube wrestling channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Make sure you like the video and subscribe right now to this channel. My other channels down there. You know where they are in the description box below. And uh, don't forget to share the video all over the internet. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're real, if you're not, go fuck yourself. And don't forget to slap that bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video. Because if you do, you need a good slap in the face. And you're SOL. And you know what that means. Ha ha ha. That's all you gotta do. So like, share, subscribe, leave a comment if you wish. But if you leave stupid comments, it's getting... Deleted, and so will you. And that's pretty much it. Be respectful, and if you can't, then you need to go somewhere else. And, uh, that's that. And, um, uh, yeah, if you're new here, welcome to the party, pal. We hope you enjoy the ride, and if not, you can go fuck yourself and get out of here. Pretty much it, my friends. Pretty much it. That's that. Alright, check out my first video that... I will be putting up a little bit later. It will be in the, in the description box a little, uh, during Dynamite. Coming up in 13 minutes. Uh, but check out my video about fucking Slayer! Slayer is coming back. They're reuniting for two big festivals. The Ladder of the Life Festival in, um, at the end of September. September the 27th. And the Riot Fest from September 20th to 22nd in Chicago, Illinois. So, you want to see Slayer? Go see him. In September. Not now, but September. So, tickets will go on sale probably in a couple months. So, go see fucking Slayer, because in this moment, be on that tour as well. Um, well, the Loud of the Life Festival, they'll be there. Uh, New Year's Day will be there. Juice Priest will be there. And a whole bunch of bands. Like 140 goddamn bands on that show. Woo! That's a lot of headbanging. My neck! So I call the medic. But we got all that. So if you're in Kentucky or Chicago in at the end of September, you're gonna have a ball with some great metal music. Because if it ain't metal, it's crap. That's pretty much it. Alright, quickly on video number two right here on the Peter Joseph channel. Thank you for watching. I'm Peter Joseph. If you didn't know that by now, now you do. So, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe. Got fireworks going out. Fireworks are going off outside my, not outside my house, but in the, in the park. I'm like, what the hell's going on? It's February 21st. Freaking fireworks are going off. It's like July. Maybe they're just doing a test. I don't know. I'm like, well, we're gonna, we, we want to shoot off fireworks in February because, you know, it's early. Unless it's, unless it's, um, I mean, it is present, I think it's present, that's actually, uh, no, tomorrow, I think it's George Washington's birthday. I thought it was today, I think it's tomorrow. I mean, it is President's week. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? That's, uh, pretty much it. Alright, really quickly, I'm gonna do, uh, a really quick, abbreviated thoughts video, uh, for NXT last night from the Capitol Wrestling Center in Orlando, Florida. Vic Joseph, the man with a creepy jacket and a lot of candy, sitting next to Byron Thaxton. We got that. Uh, this show was taped. Next week will be live. I thought it was taped, but next week will be live, and that's the go-home show before Roblox on March the 5th. So, we got that. So, we're going to get there before we hit stand and deliver. That's that. Alright, uh, last night was a pretty decent show, not not bad, let me move on. Alright, we started off with uh, the North American title on the line, the big man, Oba Femi, uh, took on Brian Pillman Jr., otherwise known as Nexus King, uh, Robbie E, caused a distraction, which led to Oba hitting one hell of a backdrop, and then sets up for the pop-up powerbomb, boom, one, two, three, the Nigerian prince himself, Wakanda forever! Oba, woo, 
Femi gets the win, retain, and that's pretty much it in four minutes. So there you go. Not a squash match per se, but still. So I gave the match two and a half out of five stars, and that's pretty much it. All right. Uh, then we had Dia Hale, J the lovely JC Jane, and even hotter Jasmine Nix in the back. Uh, talk about Dia Hale. Uh, Dia Hale's Valentine's Day date with her boy toy Riley Osborne didn't go so well. Sucks for you. Uh, then Ariana Grace comes in, starts mocking her for that. Uh, for not letting Osborne do everything for her. So then she leaves, and then we got JC Jane and Ariana Grace later on. Um, basically, JC's like, JC's like, you gotta play hard to get, you know. And, you know, Dia's like, yeah, play hard to get, play hard to get, okay, okay. That don't work! That ain't gonna work, then you're gonna get no dick from that, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> maybe you will, maybe you won't, who knows, depends on the chick. Let me move on. I'll give that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we get the Lassie from Ireland, Layla Valkyria, the NXT Women's Champion. Checks on her creepy friend, Tatum Paxley, always to thank her for last week. She'll even attack Shotzi with a baseball bat. That's a little bit excessive. So I was like, nope, you stay here and watch my match. And Tatum's like, okay, I can do that. Good. Stay in the back for once. You creepy uh, chick. All right, so I gave that also 2.25 out of 5 stars. Uh, then we go to the ring. Baron Story, Corbin, and Braun Breaker, the War Dogs, in the ring for the NXT Tag Team Title Celebration. Uh, you know, Braun's like, I can't believe, you know, we come this far since No Mercy. Corbin brings up beating Breaker way back then. Uh, then they, they named uh, their finishers the Spear of Days. Really now? And then Chase you comes out. Andre Chase, who has a new haircut, about time, um, and two cousins, they come out, uh, they want their titles back, because this is a teachable moment, they're back up and running, and then A-Kid and Ben Frazier come out, it's like, hey, we want a title shot too, they start arguing, and then Ava Rain comes out and says, hey, you two teams will fight, and the winner becomes the new number one contender for the tag team titles, so we got that, uh, and Chase U won that. So Chase U will take on Braun Breaker and Baron Storm and Corbin, I think, at Roblox. Because I didn't know when the match was going to be, but we get that. And we move on. Alright, anyway, after that, uh, we go to Roxy, pissed off. He's ready to beat up Matty Winkowski, uh, who shouldn't just be happy to be here. So, Roxy's evil side still coming out. I like it. I like it a lot. Kind of reminds me of AJ Lee when she kind of turned to the dark side. But we'll have that. Alright, then we get another vignette from the person uh, team. I don't know what this is. We've been seeing it over the last couple weeks. We thought I thought it was TN Show. It might not be. Because uh, this time it says I will be the mirror to truth. People saying it's Tama Tonga. People saying it's Joe Gacy. Why? Why would it be Joe Gacy? It makes no sense. He's there. It has to be somebody coming into the company like a Tama Tonga or a return like Tientia or it's Bo Dallas, otherwise known as Uncle Howdy. It could be somebody new. I don't know. People think it's Okada. It's not Okada. Stop it. It's not Okada. Okada isn't going, going to AEW. Just stop. But it could be, it might be Tama Tonga at this point because he is a free agent. And the Good Brothers, Gals and Anderson, uh, made their debut, they butt in NXT, beating the crap out of uh, basically Chase U and A Kid and Axiom, beat the fuck out of them. And basically saying they want a shot at the tag team belt, so we're here, you know. So why not? They're not doing anything on SmackDown. The OC is pretty much. Dissolved now. They bro all, all them broke up. AJ's on his own as the lone warrior. Me and Yim basically in catering, doing nothing. You know. She's not really doing anything. The OC is basically done. So, why not bring Gals and Anderson to NXT? You know, doing a smaller arena, which they really love to do. 
I mean, TNA, New Japan, smaller venues, except for the Tokyo Dome. But, you know, I think Gals and Anderson will thrive in NXT. And now, if you bring in Tama Tonga, Bullet Club, in NXT, you bring in Finn. Finn, Finn's contract is ending, so I would resign Finn, and Finn's gonna leave the Judgment Day anyway pretty soon, probably after WrestleMania. Finn could go down to NXT, reform the Bullet Club the right way, the old school, the, like the first version of Bullet Club, well, really the first version, the second version of Bullet Club when they had when Finn came in, and then Gals and Anderson came in after that, with Balak Fale and then Tama Tonga, Tama Tonga Loa came in. And then it became like a mega epic faction and what that is not not really now, but it is what it is. But yeah. I definitely think this vignette has to be Tama Tonga. I still in my gut think it's Tiencha. I mean, just say three faces, so uh, I'm thinking it's it has to be Uncle Howdy at in one point, or Tiencha. I mean three faces, you know, Mei Ying, uh Boa, and Dante Chen. There you go. That's the answer right there. Three three faces, but now it's like it's like giving us like weird things. Like I am the mirror of truth. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, all right, we got that. All right, uh, so we got that vignette. It was kind of creepy. All right, then we have Roxy and Maddie Winkowski. Yeah, sorry, Maddie, you're my girl and all, but you know, Roxy just beats the crap out of her in four minutes with pop rocks. Then box of the crossface. Maddie taps out. So Roxy's still, you know, pissed off. She wants her NXT women's title back that she never really lost. I think she gets the shot at at I don't think it's gonna be at Roblox. I think it's gonna be a stunned and deliver. She might get it back, because really Lyra's title reign has not been that great. But move on, move on with that. Um then we got Metaphor and Catchpoint 3.0 still arguing over the Heritage Cup. Uh, no one is going to give them a t uh, one of them a title shot, but we don't know who's going who's gonna to be fighting next week. That sucks, but we got that. Uh, then we had a war between Josh Briggs and the resident virgin, Brooks Jensen. Beat the crap out of each other. Uh, Briggs got the win. Uh, pretty good match, 3 out of 5 stars. And then afterwards, Briggs... Says, I did this for you. I love you. They hug. They're back together. Yay! Now, probably Fallon Henley's going to get back with them. So, the former team is going to be back. They shouldn't even be broken up. So, we got all that. Move on. Alright, then we go to a weird segment with Dominic Dijak. And we have Joe Gacy in a straight jacket. He's in like a padded, not a padded room per se. So, he's there and Gacy's doing his weird mannerisms. I'm like, ah, I didn't get you, Dijak. And then Luca Crucifino, the resident attorney, says this is illegal. You can't just, you're falsely imprisoning him. And Dai is like, well, I don't give a shit. He violated my law. And Luca's like, well, that's not how we, it works down here. So, see what happens with that. Uh, then we got Melo talking about Trick. He's at the barber shop. Says, um, you know, we had great times together, but, you know, I saw you eyeing. You know, me, my title, for, you know, when I had the NXT title, you were eyeing it, so I wanted to stop you before you got to me thing. So we got that. I think Melo uh, is going to face Ilya at Roadblock, or maybe at, at Standard Deliver. I think Trick will uh, cost him. I think he's going to cost him at Roadblock, and then at Standard Deliver, we're going to get a, like a street fight, or some type, of, some type of big match with Trick and Melo. But I wouldn't be surprised if Melo beats Ilya in their fourth match. Gets the title for the second time. Uh, the third, I think the second or third time. And then Trick wins it at Stand and Deliver. That would be big. Because Melo's on the SmackDown roster right now. So, what does he have to prove he's, if he wins the... I mean, he holds the belt for like a month. So, he does like a Becky Lynch type of thing. But, I mean, we, we got that. Alright, then we had uh, JC Jane beats Ariana Grace. Uh, after the match, JC and... And Jasmine Nix want to want to beat up Ariana Grace and you know and Dia's like you know they look at Dia Dia doesn't want to get take part of it so that's that so it looks like Dia's gonna go back to being a face now and JC probably found her uh, you know toxic partner if you will I mean Jasmine Nix is beautiful holy shit 
All right, we got that. Uh, then we have my cousin Tony D. Gets you a gets you a chicken palm hero for two dollars. He's busy right now. He's he's conducting business, if you will. So he's there. Uh, Rizzo and Stacks come in. Uh, Tony's like, uh, I want to take the family in a new direction, and it's time for me to really be the dawn of NXT. And really, uh, the tag team titles are not my focus. Are not our focus right now. So. We, we're going on to bigger and better things. And we got that. Alright, so Dynamite is on the air. We're starting off with a banger. We got the Blackpool Cook Club of John Moxley, the righty. You know, the vile thing. And the Swiss Superman, Claudio, they're taking on FTR. This is going to be a slobber knocker to start. Can't, this match is going to be great. Can't wait to watch this match. But anyway, let me finish this off. Uh, so yeah, so Tony D and the family going in a new direction, and it's not the tag team titles. So we'll see what happens with my legit cousin Tony D and the family. Got that. Uh, then I mentioned KCU wins the uh, is the number one contenders for the tag team belts, and then the Good Brothers come out and lay both teams out. That was great. Uh, what I I missed a segment here, did I? Oh yeah, we got Rich Holland and Sarah Schreiber. Uh, Rich. Says, I'm not done with Gallus. And next week, he's going to come out and apologize for what he did last week with the chair. And that's it. Just walks off. Says, like, are we done? We're done? I guess we're done. So that's kind of interesting. So we got that. Um, and we move on. With that. Uh, uh, then we go to the dreaded parking lot. We see the OC... Uh, well, actually, before we get to that, uh, we have Ilya Dragunov willing to give Carmelo Hayes another NXT title shot at Roadblock, which will be accepted, obviously, as long as uh, Carmelo meets him in the ring face-to-face -face next week. You know that's happening. And Ilya's like, I'm not coming coming to beat you um, again. I'm coming for your soul. He's going to swallow his soul. Pretty much. And he had the red eyes creep me out. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. We got that. Uh, all right. Then we got Thea Hale and Fallon Henley in the locker room talking about how bad everything's going for both of them lately. Uh, Thea, Thea said my, my Valentine's Day day date went awful. It was garbage, you know. Well, you didn't put out. That's why. Um, and then Fallon talks about how bad uh, her Valentine's Day date was last year. I forgot who she went out with. I could care less. And, um, then they leave and have a chat. Girl talk! Yeah, we all, uh, I didn't give a shit about that. Let me move on with that. Alright, then we go to, uh, my favorite part of the night. Lash Legend! Get shit done! Along with the beautiful Jakarta Jackson. Oh, my ebony desire. Woo! So, uh, so Lash takes on Kaylani Jordan. Uh, Jakarta offers a distraction at the end of the match. Kaylani knocks her off the apron, but walks right into the slam dunk. Boom! One, two, three, Lash Legend gets the win. And we got that. And then after the match, more booty in the ring. Keanu, Keanu James and Izzy Dane come out. They try to beat down on Kaylani Jordan, but she escaped. Gotta be quicker than that. That's uh, pretty much it. Uh, then we go to uh, the, the credit parking lot. The OC say that they're different than anybody else, and they're going to take the NXT Tag Team Belts. I think they could. I think they should. They haven't been champs since, pff, God knows how long. Been a while. Been a long... I think the last time we saw them with, the belt, with any type of tag team title was the TNA Tag Team Titles. And then Carl Anderson won the, uh, what do you... He won the... What belt did he win? The never open weights, no, not the strong one. The never open weight title. We had to give that to uh, Tama Tonga, I believe. That was, I think, a, a year or two ago. I don't think they held. I think the, I don't think they held the new any uh, new Japan title. I don't think we well besides that title, but I don't think they held the tag team titles when they, when it came back to Japan for a little bit. But it is what it is. So they're they're in NXT. They're coming for the belts. I think they will win those belts. Maybe we'll get a Bullet Club to sweep. Reunion. It was nice, nice, nice that the crowd was going too sweet. Woo, woo. Yeah, only if Marty was around, man. Only if Marty Skull, Skrull, the villain, the you know the penguin, 
as I call them, you know, would, uh, you know, you got pretty much blackballed and blacklisted from, from wrestling because of the whole Me Too movement that Joey Ryan got in, Matt Riddle got involved a little bit, even, even though, even um, here in New York, uh, Rude Boy Riley got a, got um, he got caught with his hands in a cookie jar with child porn, gone from wrestling completely. Fuck that guy. He was a good guy back then, you know, former FBW champion, former Tier One champion. But when he, when we, when um, the news came out that he is a child, you know, you know kind of like a pedophile. Whoop, gone. You're out of here. We hate you. We don't want to see you ever again. I'm pretty much. I don't even know. I don't even give a shit what he's doing now. But it is what it is. We got that. All right, then we go to the main event for the NXT Women's Title: Lila Valkyria against Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, this is where Shotzi got hurt. She tore her ACL. She's gonna be out the entire year. Oh, that sucks. That really sucks for Shotzi. Uh, she did a apron DDT, and her leg basically buckled, and she was done. So the match ends. Uh, or did it end? Well, it didn't end because Ava Rain comes out and basically announces that Lyra has an open challenge for her belt. And then Lash Legend, she comes out, has a pretty decent match with uh, Lyra. Uh, Roxy is shown in the back. And she's like, what's going on, ladies? And then she sees that Lash Legend took her spot, basically, and her title shot. And then she just throws the TV all over the place. She's pissed. And then, you know, the match was decent. It was like a six-minute match. But really, Lash should have won this match. It's like I said, Lyra's title reign hasn't been really that great since beating Becky. But, you know, it is what it is. And that's that. Uh, Lyra wins. Lyra wins the match after uh, she knocks Lash off the top rope. Hits a really bad-looking splash. One, two, three, she gets the win. And that's uh, pretty much it for that. And that ends NXT for this week. Uh, wasn't a great show per se, but I gave it a six, I gave it six and a half out of ten stars. Let me know what you guys thought of the show down below in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video all over the place, follow me on social media, all that good shit. And that's pretty much it. Alright guys, I gotta go. I'm gonna watch the rest of Dynamite. Uh, they're gonna have my sensible dinner. And then later on... Right here, once again on the channel, your AEW review. So yep, you got your triple threat tonight on your Wednesday night delight. And um, that's pretty much it. Alright guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. And until next time, fuck you, man, if you're not down with that. And that's it. Peace.